Chapter okay. eight, chapter nine. So we're starting the recording now. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, when you want me to, to start with uh, chapter nine, just let me know. Yes, I just need to find it in my, in my manual. Okay. I think um, Berta has got a lot about this topic. I don't know. What is the topic? <laughs> the, the chapter is from steady to surfer to star. Mm. I think you are in the process of surfing. Let me find it first. Steady to surfer to star. Okay, I would like to listen first, then maybe some comments. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a chance to look at that link that I've sent to you? No, not yet, uh, Magda. I just arrived home. Today was extremely busy. Okay, no, it's not a problem. I just thought that was really good. I can send it to the other guys as well. I will, check it. I will check it for sure. Yeah. Okay, we're very close to part three. Uh, this is the last chapter. Yeah. And then we are to three. Um, how to sizzle. I, uh, <clears throat> I need to work uh, to get myself slowly released a little bit from Toastmasters to do my own thing as well. Mm. Um, I don't know how. Um, I'm afraid that if I let go of my all the things that I do at a blaze, I'm not too sure how it will carry on because behind the scenes I'm doing a lot of things. I don't mind, but uh, yeah, it shouldn't be delegation. a one-man show. Hmm? Delegation is good. Delegation is good. Yes, delegation yeah. is good. I don't mind to delegate if people would step up. Victor and Ablaze is absolutely a star. Um, <clears throat> he's doing many things behind the scenes. You are also helping Berta, so that's really fine. Um, yes. Now you used to preach to the converted. But um, yes, I'm just coming more and more to the conclusion that I am a bit of a free spirit. I don't want to every time do everything as other people tell me to do. I want to do things in a different way, but that's just me. Okay, thank you. It's time. It's seven o two. Please. By the way, I have I have some uh, ideas and maybe statements, and you can help me. Uh, for some time, we are discussing about this. Yeah. So uh, I I more or less decided to uh, to define and narrow down my offerings uh, in two and or maximum three uh, topics. Yes. Uh, one will be uh, engagement, and there will be a speak about speech about it, and maybe a seminar related to it, and it has a worth. It has it has mm. some uh, value. And the engagement program that I will be selling, that is 12 weeks and it has its own rules. That's a licensed product. Yeah. And the third one, third one, I don't want to go to conflict resolution. I don't want to go to time management, anything, only public speaking I, I selected. Yeah. So I will, I will prepare one day, uh, three hours, uh, I mean, one hour, three hours and full day uh, content for for public speaking and then I will offer it to some uh, specific and niche training companies so that they can they can sell me what uh, what why did you decide to do that Bertai to, to focus things and to break them because, down be, because because I, I, I want to create uh, a, a, an image and and the kind of a brand with my personal name on it mm. and uh, and and engagement as well as public speaking uh, or, or presentation techniques, however you call it, both of them are, I mean, there is enough, uh, surely enough space, surely enough value, and uh, it's easy to, easy to position myself well. And these are, these are connected to each other, but not always necessarily. So separately, without talking about anything about engagement, I can I can sell a one day public speaking seminar and that is a that is a uh, that that should be a, a cash bringing thing for me and I will try that. 
I will do one maybe pro bono for Istanbul Commerce uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Istanbul Sanayi Odası, Matt. Mm -hmm. And uh, if if I can be in their catalog, uh, that is good because they are paying the, the instructors. Okay, sounds like a good let, idea. Let, 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 let's let's try because. I don't want to go to, let's say, time management or conflict resolution or a couple of other topics that I can do, but uh -huh. it requires, it will require a lot more effort from my side, not only content, but uh, attaching that topic to myself. Mm -hmm. I can attach this topic to myself much, much easily. And uh, it's good to be narrow and then be, be focused as, as much as I can in, in the beginning. That's, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. thinking. Huh. See how it goes. Well, Let's shall see. we uh, jump in with, with chapter nine? Yes. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. Go. So this is chapter nine. And as Magda was, was saying, we're, we're about to start with, uh, with part three, the last part, Sizzle. But we have one more to finish up. This is chapter nine. From Steady to Surfer to Star. And I was like, I, I looked at that title and... and uh, it's like, okay, well, I kind of understand surfer, and I definitely understand what he means by star, but I still don't know what he means by steady. What, what do you think he means by steady? I, I don't know. For me, steady is <clears throat> working steadily towards your goal, not rushing in, not being that crazy. Is, that is very optimistic way of putting it, Magda. <laughs> Well, I, I think I, I think like steady steady means business doesn't grow all the time. You may have some mm. steady periods of time, uh -huh. and that is also okay. That means your revenue can be the same. I mean, the content and the revenue generators might be different, but there might be some some steady times as well. I mean, maybe it's in the graphic two hundred thirty fourth page, uh -huh. it's somewhere like. The slow growth uh, or growth slows. Uh, these these parts are more or less the the steady parts. I don't know. I'm just commenting. Yeah. I read this piece some months ago. So when I, when, I, when I saw that and and I, I thought at the at the beginning of a business, you're, the the last thing that you are is steady. <laughs> at the beginning of the business, you got a, a few dollars one day, and then the next day nothing and Oh, Victor, you've got your hand up. What's your take on it? Yes. I think it's like you decided to be in this business. Like your mind is steady. Like, oh, I mm. want to go oh. into the speakers. Yeah, that is, I'm ready. Uh, another one. Another way of looking at it. Wow, yeah. what a creativity. Three different answers you got. One question, three different answers. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Excellent. And if you look at page 234, uh, oh. <coughs> there's his answer, this slow growth uh, before you get the dramatic growth and then slow growth as you're moving on towards your final goal. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's what he had in mind. Anyway. Okay. So on, uh, on, on, Page 233 at, at the beginning, it, it talks about the early success and, you know, the importance of after your early success, not getting anchored to it, not getting dragged down by it. But I thought, what if we're just starting out and we don't even have that early success yet? If we're just starting out, what do we imagine yeah. that early success would be? I mean, bear tie. That's me. Yeah, bear tie. Then I thought of bear tie and thought, okay, so bear tie, what does that early success look like? Uh, for me, early success is selling one program and execute it. I oh. mean, because that will be, that will be the, the cream or the start of my, my third line of my business. I mean, uh, yeah. So, uh, that's, 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 that's something on top of my steady, so to say. I mean, my steady is I will work for this global organization and I have a certain cash coming. Mm -hmm. But selling a program and executing it at the same time, uh, accompany it with some other activities, again, attaching myself to the, to the topic of engagement, blah, blah. 
Mm-hmm. That would be a, that would be an early success for me, and I give myself I don't know maybe six months, nine months I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It will take some time. So, so for you, the the early success is selling your first program. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. What about for you, Victor? What do you think? Uh, for me, like early success is not like the first paid speech. Mm-hmm. It's like those people who pay you second time. Okay. That means Good. your first speech is good. So they hire you again. Good. That's my understanding about early success. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So getting paid the second time. Yeah, for the from the same from the same people, like same they customer. hire you again. Yeah. Same customer. I thought about uh, what what is early success for me, and um, you know I've I've been in in this business my in my business for you know five or six years, and so I'm I'm past the early success, but I wonder pretty often, uh, you know, am I stuck in it? Uh, like if the early success is uh, somebody has paid me to help them. Uh, with their investment presentation. What if I got stuck in that? Now that's kind of how I define myself, professionally at least. Uh, that's what I help people with, their their investment presentations. What if I'm limiting myself by defining myself that way? What if I'm getting stuck in my early success? Yes, uh, that's a... That's a possible probability, yes. Uh, what, what, what do you think? I think if you add something to it, uh-huh. that's still within your field, but if you add another dimension to it, and I can't tell you what because it's not my field. Uh-huh. Yes. So is there something that is still within your field of expertise? Mm-hmm. Or within your client's field of expertise that you can enhance and help your client with. Correct. Earlier, earlier tonight, I was on a uh, another um, uh, another uh, on a webinar, and somebody suggested to me. I'm going to read to you what they suggested. They suggested okay. creating a. You know, it, my my core business is helping CFOs with their investment presentations, and this this guy, this other guy, suggested uh, creating a community. For example, call it something like the CFO Investment Roundtable or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and so that you're you're basically just bringing your potential customers together, uh, and creating a community for, for them to discuss the techniques of CFO investment requests. And, you know, God knows what kind of skill, new skills that's going to bring up, things that you're going to have to learn. I thought that sounded like a good suggestion uh, for getting past the, the early success uh, hurdle for me. Because, uh, yeah, mm. I set up a, a community like that, God knows what I would learn. Exactly. And from that, you can actually <clears throat> find out what is going on out there and you can tailor make what you present to the world from that. Mm. It's, like having, it's like having another board of people that is giving you input and you can work with the rest of that. Then on, 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 I mean, Matt. Uh, for for me, for me, you have a, a wide variety of talent, okay, and capability, but you selected a very narrow space oh. with your own choice. With your own choice, this is your choice, oh. and you are you are I think so far all right with it, and uh, you have your life. Uh, I mean, planned around it. However, again, this is this is your choice, in my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. You can widen widen it up to a uh, to a similar area, which you would be again 
uh, I'm sure great and very helpful and charge a lot uh, eventually. But you selected, you chose to be, uh, again, uh, a deeper expert on a niche area mm -hmm. that you come. And if you, if you, I mean, it's, it's two way street. It, it didn't, how to say it? It didn't limit you, but it gave you a comfort over time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you you didn't uh, you 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 didn't choose to spend a, an additional effort to widen widen your business uh, mm -hmm. to attract another segment, maybe a similar segment, mm -hmm. uh, and this is this is not because this finance and uh, entrepreneurs presentation part is limiting you it's because you selected it that way that's my interpretation of, of it yeah you know that uh, brings up a, a similar topic on on page 234 he he mentions the success trap and this is the that graph okay. you know the s yeah. curves and the slow growth period and the fast growth period and the plateaus and stuff like that I see a, a message from, from Victor. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Let's not go into details. <laughs> okay. Whatever he does, he does. So, yeah. So, so I was wondering, you know, the, he, he's talking about the success trap. And so I asked myself, how do we know that we're succeeding? Like, is it revenue? Is it uh, like reach? How many people are we reaching? Something else. I don't know. How, like, like Magda, for, for you, how would you, how would you define success? Success for me is not. Your so sound is breaking, Matt. Pardon me. Your sound was breaking. I was not clearly hearing you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can, can you hear me now? Bear time. Now better. Now better. Yes. Okay. Yes, now better. Yeah. I was just uh, asking Magda. Gone yeah. again. Pardon me. Can I talk? Yeah, please do. Okay. For success for me has got different components. And it's not always only the exterior things. With my personality, I am really a servant leader and I would like to serve people. So for me, part of my success is going to be, do I feel that I'm serving people in the way that I want to serve them? And then, of course, if I can serve them in the way that I like and I earn an income on that, that would be fantastic. For that reason, I am not where I'm supposed to be because my business website was created in the days when I've been um, almost at the brink of um, retiring from being a solicitor. And it's all about, well, the I'm going to keep I'm going to keep the the name it is achieve business uh, achieve workplace harmony but I've grown so much and things change so much at that stage I was concentrating on a fair workplace bullying in the workplace but I'm going to keep the name but I'm going to start from a totally different point and I want that to be a community website where people can go on and can leave um, comments and, and work on that. For instance, to give you an idea, I really have a bee in my bonnet about companies having all these wonderful uh, vision and mission statements. So what is happening in real life is people go on employees, prospective employees, go on websites and they read the website and they see <clears throat> okay, my values agree with the values of this company. So the poor people go and they go and uh, they succeed and they get a job applica a job offer and they start working in that company only to find out that what's on the website is only lip service. Inside the company, they're doing something totally different. Mm -hmm. For instance, take Toastmasters, for instance. The first one of the four values is integrity. If I can only tell you, and I can't give you a figure because I've not kept record of it, about the dishonesty going on in 
Toastmasters. It is, it is mind-boggling. And, and it's done in such a nice way. You know, we do a speech, we get a credit, but it's got nothing to do with the project whatsoever. Is that, is that integrity? So you get these, you get this disconnect in business already. So the poor employees that succeed and going to work for a company, they at a dead end because what they thought the company is going to be, it's not like that at all. And what is the big, big thing in life today? Well, always, it's always been emotional safety. So immediately the rug is pulled out under someone. And now the employee expect this employee, the employee expect the employee to be a star employee. But they're in totally, the, <laughs> they're in the wrong culture because they've been misleaded by the company from the word go. So to answer your question, for me, success will be, yes, to make people aware, to earn a little bit of income, but it will be to change the way that business is going about, talking about themselves, advertising themselves. The last speech that I've done about you fired is just a tiny little speck of what I'm thinking that is so wrong in business. I don't know if you've seen the, the speech, Matt. No. That I've done. You fired. It's on Facebook. Do you ever go on Facebook? Every once in a while, yes. Yes. Uh, the speech is up there. Maybe we can send you a link for the speech. Please and do. that is just about some of the cliches that people use, that employers use in advertising. Mm -hmm. That's got, it's nothing to do with reality. So success for me would be to bring that awareness and that's far bigger than myself than myself and for that i need other people as well i need people to go to the website and say this woman has got something here we're going to go back to our business and we're going to tell them listen we need to revamp how we present ourselves to the outside world and then maybe from there i can get a speaking opportunity who knows? I'm not so interested in speaking opportunities as I am interested in changing this awfulness that's going on in business. Victor, you uh, you mentioned that uh, the the importance of getting uh, getting a customer to pay you twice is that like uh, a measure of success for you? Like you'll you'll know that you're succeeding, you get somebody to pay you the second time. That's my, like, I define early success. The ultimate success is to help others. Mm -hmm. To help others to, yeah, I'm working on my project as well. And I want to change, like, the system, like, the education system in China. They are so time-consuming and not, like, effective like learning English we spend so much time on reading only and filling up the test form and not speaking so that is what I want to change a little bit like from my side so that is why I just I define success you know Alan Weiss he, he, he uh, multiple times in the book he uh, he mentions how 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 famous he is and how well, well recognized he is and you know often when he's when he's photographed he's you know posing next to one of his cars or you know he's got his <laughs> one of his dogs sitting in the front seat or something like that he's like i don't know when when, when you read his books do you, you get the the feeling that uh I mean, the, the, is it the, I don't know, is it the money that, uh, that buys these things that makes them, that, that, that has them being successful? What, what do you think he's like as a person? I think he's an arrogant bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he likes he likes himself too much, but oh, we'll okay. also like him. I mean, we are spending like I don't know twelve weeks just reading his book. That is something. Yeah, yeah, we we are, we are reading his book, uh, and yeah, yeah. I, I agree that he, he he is he does come across as an arrogant bastard, but we do spend time reading his book, and we are just right. his right. words. <laughs> Absolutely, I mean. Uh, Oh. The thing is, I think um, to have that community input in today's life is so important because if you look at page 235, you know, um, we think this is what it's going to be. But things evolve. You've got your topics evolve. What is important mm. in the future is not what's important now. So unless you stay current, and you're only going to stay current, especially if you're someone like me that's no longer in the business world, is to have the input from other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About fees increase, I don't even want to talk about that. But methodology changes. They're talking now about generation, uh, generation Z, Z, that's coming into the marketplace. Yes. And the influence that they're going to have on the business world. And it's very different to the time that I've been a solicitor. So to reach those people, I will have to adopt to the way of doing things. Because if there's anything in this book that we've learned, it's not about me or you. It's about the paying client. And if I can develop something and maybe sell it on my website to help Generation Z or Z to make life more comfortable for them, why not? I don't know. I'm not there yet. I'm asking the question. Technology changes. That is a big thing for me because Victor can tell you that I'm really challenged as far as technology is concerned. I can do the basic things, but the moment that there's a problem, I'm shouting for help. How do you stay abreast of technology if you don't go somewhere to a school, in my case, and learn it? And this is a problem. I've done that. And then because I don't use it all the time, I forget. You can outsource your IT to the other people. Yes, that is what I'm trying to do. But it's not, it's not helping me to understand. <laughs> I need I think to you don't other people understand at this place. Yeah. No need to like figure out a hey, bird time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we've got two bird ties now. That's that's an improvement. <laughs> two bird ties are better than one. Yes. <laughs> and then he's saying you know bias change and that we see all the time. Mm -hmm. We see industries expand. Audience level increases. Additional services grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got no idea with uh, artificial intelligence what the ultimate um, impact is going to be. I personally think that places like Toastmasters will come to an end because you will have your little robot and you can speak to your robot and your robot can say five hours, too much full of words. Your robot can say not enough voice. Um, variation you can practice your speech to your little personal robot at home you don't need then because you've got that feedback isn't that what Toastmasters is about is doing the speech and getting the feedback if you're too advanced for Toastmasters you're getting really frustrated because the feedback that you're getting is not up to standard where you are and that is causing the Unpleasantness sometimes in Toastmasters. You talk, I, uh, uh, go ahead, Bertai. Go, go, Matt. Oh, uh, uh, Magda, you were talking about uh, uh, how uh, robots could replace the evaluations in Toastmasters. If 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 robots can replace the evaluations in Toastmasters, aren't the evaluations just kind of worthless anyway maybe maybe it's the maybe it's a sign that the people need to to up their game a little bit 
Yeah, that's what she says. <laughs> But I, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't know. Our lives will not be enough uh, to see uh, robots or artificial intelligence to come to that level to, to really understand and feel, so to say, the subtle, subtle stories in a speech. I, I don't believe that. So no. we need still humans for that. All different layers of brain. Uh -huh. yeah. The um, we already have apps that can do that. Like Ori, for instance, can give you quite a bit of information about how you speak. Mm. There's another one as well, and I can't remember its name now because I got pissed off with the owner. I've got <laughs> it on my phone, but I won't. <laughs> I won't buy the update. So, mm. yeah. Another thing that he, he mentions on page 236, he mentions moving from working as a subcontractor for a seminar house to working directly with the line executives. And I had a, a personal experience with that, with m moving from being a subcontractor to working directly. I had an experience with that uh, probably about four years ago. I was wondering mm. if, if, if you guys have, have had any experiences like that going direct and did it piss people off and burn any bridges for you? Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely not there yet. I am, first of all, try to position myself as a subcontractor first. I need, I need these bridges to happen for me to get any business. Yeah. Uh, then, then we will see if I burn them again and go to the end users myself. But at this moment today, I also go to end users. One of the uh, things that I found as, as I was making the transition from, you know, going to, or into, to going to direct was that the, uh, um, I didn't burn bridges too bad. I didn't burn bridges nearly as much as I expected uh, because okay. the, it was more the client base was uh, changing. Like if you, I mean, if you, my, my take on it is that if you approach going direct as just a way to gather more profit, then it will probably burn the bridges. But if you approach going direct as a solution to a problem, and the problem being that the client base is changing, uh, the subcontractor's client base isn't your new client base, then the, the problems of going direct are, are smaller. It's easier, to, it's easier to smooth them over. It's easier to not burn the bridges. Okay. Um, and then uh, another thing that he says is on page 237, he says that every other year you should abandon the bottom 10 to 15% of your business. I don't know, mm. what do you guys think of that? I understand why you're saying it's the date weight. Mm -hmm. As um, uh, this is not quite um, public speaking, the example that I'm going to use from my solicitor days, I know the people that did not pay my accounts and I had to hassle them to get my money paid mm -hmm. are also the people that's giving me a lot of grief. They're not happy about everything. You know, they're unhappy. They find all kinds of excuses. They really labor intensive. You're better off without them. Yeah. I agree. You're, you're better off without them. Clean, clean out the dead wood. In fact, yeah. uh, I think that his, uh, in this book at least, his, uh, his suggestion, every other year, abandon the bottom 10% to 15% of your business. I think that's way mm -hmm. too conservative. Uh, every year you should, in, 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 in my, my perspective, every year, every year you should abandon the bottom 25% of your business. Wow. That is aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say goodbye to my hubby. I'm here. I'm listening. Pardon me. Okay. No. Uh, Uh, she will she will kiss her husband so we don't need uh, to see yes. that we don't want to see back to kissing her husband
We also don't want to. So I'm sure she's having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> I am having a good time. Thank you. <laughs> I'm having a good time too. <laughs> and then, then uh, on page 238, 238, yeah. 238, he mentions that one of the questions you should ask yourself, you know, as you're, as you're shedding this, this old business, one of the mm -hmm. questions you should ask yourself is does it really require my talents or could anyone do it? And that's right. something that, that I've been, that I've struggled with myself over the past few years is wondering, um, okay, as, as you shed business because you're asking, could anyone do it? Should you like try to keep the revenue by getting, you know, some employees to do it or should you just, dump the business entirely and replace it with new customers? What, what do you guys think of that? Matt, I just want to backtrack a little bit. Oh. Okay. If you spend the time that you're spending with the, it's sounding awful now to say the dead weights, but the people that's draining you and not, you're not getting that satisfaction or the income. Oh. And you spend that on your um, really outstanding clients. Even if it's not directly income focused, but relationship focused, I think you're far better off. I'd rather have five excellent clients that t uh, than 10 clients. And five of those are chomping, chomping up the time that I can use and work with the good clients. Yes, that's, that's, that's my that's my opinion too. A bad client is just pulling energy away from, from a good one. Yeah. I don't know, but Berta is starting out. What's, what's your take on it? Um, hmm. uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to analyze uh, what kind of customers are bringing what kind of revenue piece. Uh, and abandoning, I'm, I mean, in my life, in my world, abandoning is not very easy to do. So mm -hmm. if there is a recurring business, recurring customer for some time, some years or so, and uh, that relationship is difficult to form in a, in a totally new account, uh, that uh, recurring customer could bring you maybe, you know, less money, less profit, but that is a that is a ongoing cash that you feel comfortable about and 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 you are giving good service then they are not going anywhere else and and trust brings speed there are books about it yeah. and you have a good level of trust and you don't spend a lot of time i mean from my old business there are some accounts they were buying $50,000 machines by a telephone call mm. normally you don't do that yeah. So I value, I value those customers as well. I mean, abandoning could be there is some new service, a new positioning that I want to bring and that customer totally says no or that customer goes to another vendor for another segment that I cannot serve or something like that. So... Yeah. Did you uh, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not very good at answering that because for my business, I don't have any clients. I only have one. Uh, and for my previous business, the example is very different. So I cannot comment on that. Talk to me in two years, Matt. Then I can give you something more. Uh, on the on the, the, the GE business, um, mm. you find that like you have these customers who, you know, they're not interested in your new stuff, and but mm. they are placing very profitable orders just by phone call. Uh, did you find like, Having those people around, did that affect your your the satisfaction level that you're getting from the business or not? I mean, for for me personally, it doesn't make a big. Uh, I mean, it's not important for me. I was managing distributor, and for distributor, these accounts are important because these guys are always buying. Like let's say market is hundred, these guys are like twenty percent of the market. Mm -hmm. And the profit goes down, but that twenty percent is keep coming to the distributor. So okay. that was important, important for the distributor to get that account, even though, even though the, the profitability goes down and it's difficult every year to work with these big accounts. 
However, that's very valuable. You cannot simply dump them, to be honest. And then yeah. if you do that, a competitor comes in and you are out. So that is, that is a different dynamic. Hmm. I mean, what they can do, let's say uh, there are doctor's offices and these are scattered customers, not a big account, but they, he buys one machine in four years, five years. Mm-hmm. And you can, you can afford not to put enough investment to certain segments like Dr. X, Dr. Y uh, on, a, on a particular uh, new product level, for example. They, they can afford that. They can, they can select it, so to say. Okay. Uh, if it's more profitable, they go. If it's less profitable, they say, sorry, it's possible. But for big accounts that are recurring customers you cannot simply leave them alone. You shouldn't. Yeah. Then on, on uh, page 244, 245, 246, so about three pages or so, goes into, uh, yet again, it goes into the SCS, what was it? Yeah. Speaker-centered speaker, ACS, audience-centered speaker, and BCS. Yes. He goes into so that yet again. I think it's a very good point, but it's one that he's, he makes over and over in the book. And then uh, on, on page 247. Can I just stop you? I want to backtrack a little bit because we, I'm afraid that I might forget about it. Uh-huh. In the tech chat box, I've got a link there of a video, and it's all to do with this beware of coaches. And he's talking specifically about people that are overtrained. And this link that I've got here for you is a speech that I forwarded to Berta um, about this whole thing. And it's making so much, uh, what he's saying is making so much sense to me. Actually, you've got to be so good that when you do a speech that you're immediately booked for your next gig. Mm -hmm. So please uh, make a copy of that link. Okay. Okay. You've got it already, Berta. Uh, it's in your yes. email. Yes, and uh, I'm, I'm downloading it as we speak. Yeah, I would like to know what is your opinion once you watched it. Sure, sure. Yes, there was something else that I wanted to say. Uh, okay, forget about it. Okay, that happens. <laughs> I, I, for, I forgot about it. <laughs> oh. Victor, can you please, that speech of mine, um, you fired. Can you please give Matt a link? Yes, yes, it's also. Because Matt, you can see a little bit of my frustration. The, uh, uh, Magda, the the link that you sent, let me see if I have the correct one. Is it uh, three secrets for powerful public speaking to become a world-class speaker? Eric Edmides. Let me go there. Yes, that's the that's the one. Yeah, I just said. Yeah. Every level of our society at the moment. And yeah, when I started listening to him, you were sort of unimpressive, but then I gave it a little bit of time, and it um, it uh, picked up. I think because his speech here is not cut right from the beginning, um, I get I get the feeling that there was something happening before this. I use about one hour and 15 minutes, and then it's question and answer time. And in the question and answer time, they are really good stuff. Mm, okay. And then uh, okay. let's see, the second one here, it looks like the, the one that Bertai sent. Looks like uh, the- just that speech about what uh, the cliches in business advertising. Okay. Let me, let's go uh, on the whole quest, you know, and... Please, people, use your damn common sense type of approach, you know? Yeah. I mean, book- Just because everyone has got a stupid vision and mission statement, you don't have to have one. Uh, it's a good point. But in this speech of mine, I'm only talking about cliches and business advertising. <laughs> and only uh, three of those. There's a whole slew of them. Okay. It will give you a, maybe a smile on your face. Yeah. Let me bookmark that one. Okay. okay. Good. We, we're getting on to where? Page 246. Yeah. And so, uh, actually, I, I wanted to ask a question about page 247. 
Mm -hmm. line in there. He says, if you feel that you're boasting when you try to bring people value, you're in the wrong business. And I, I, I read that and thought, well, as a, as a naturally humble person, ouch. <laughs> the title of the book is speaking against that, but there you go. Pardon me? I said the title of his book, you know, the million dollars, you know, it's sort of a testament against this, um, this uh, uh, comment that he's making. Yeah. And, uh, uh, because I regularly have a problem uh, admitting to myself that I bring people value, which uh, he said, which I read this sentence, if you feel that you're boasting when you try to bring people value, you're in the wrong business. So I read that and I think, oh, wow, I, I'm, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> Did you raise your hand. What, were, what What's on your mind? Well, isn't he posting in this book? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think the same as when you mentioned this sentence. Oh, that's me. That is what I said just before, like a few minutes ago. Oh, the, the, you feel like you're boasting? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so I think if you go into any situation and you see yourself only as the coach, as the person, the, the guide. You're guiding people to explore this information. It's really hard to boast. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. say, say, say that again. If you go into any situation, say you're going to a new client, Matt, uh -huh. and you are of the opinion that you are there as a guide, you know certain things. You, this is a prospective client, but you're there to guide them. You're not there to tell them. And you're not there to boast about things. You are there to help them discover their truths, how they, how they can explore this information. Then it's really hard to boast. That's true. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, what's that phrase? Uh, imposter syndrome. Are you familiar with that? I'm very familiar with that, and I really struggle with it from time to time. Yeah, imposter syndrome. Uh, Bertai, are you familiar with that phrase? No. Imposter syndrome. Uh, Magda, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's basically uh, uh, you feel like you don't deserve to be in the room, basically. You're not yeah. qualified. Uh, Bertai, do you, do you run into that uh, as you're starting out uh, your new business, uh, feeling like, hey, I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to be in the room. I don't deserve to call myself. Yes, uh, yes and no. I try to avoid that. So uh -huh. I, st I, I always tell myself I'm, I'm deserving to do this. So. Yeah. When, when I get it, Matt, is I'm, I'm a trained solicitor. Uh -huh. so all my life, I've played devil's advocate. So I will sometimes, my problem is the different way around. I would some, sometimes frame a question that it's looking like a negative, but I want people to think. And then when I get this pushback that people call me names, I think, hell, you know, what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand where I'm coming from. I think so. I think I do. Yeah. For instance, in a blaze, I realized very early on that branding is Toastmasters, but the culture is that of the club. Mm. So our culture is a bit different to other clubs. Mm -hmm. And every so often I get pushback on that. But the fact of the matter is how you, you make one club stand out between more than 16,000 other clubs all over the world. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you have in Toastmasters is your culture. Yeah. Now, I like, I like a culture where people learn and grow. Mm -hmm. Some of the Toastmasters feel that, oh, we don't want that. We just want a nice time. <laughs> 
Uh -huh. Can you see immediately there's a problem for me? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm getting called all kinds of names. You know, you are, you are this or you that. And I know it's not addressing the problem because calling me names is the lowest form of communication when you want to solve a problem. Because you never get to the problem. Say we, Victor and I work together. And Victor would say some or do something. And I would say to him, oh, Victor, he's explaining some facts to me. And I'm saying to him, oh, you're so defensive. All he's doing is giving me facts. But now I want to break him down. I don't even realize it. I say to him, oh, you're just so defensive. I didn't solve, didn't solve the problem. Did not even touch the argument. I'll do a speech in that in a blaze one of these days. Hmm. So, where did your question start out? Do you feel imposter syndrome? Yes. In those situations, I think, what the hell am I doing here? You know, I'm just wasting my time. You know, um, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm not on the same par as these people. And I don't see it as good, as better, good, better, best, or worse, or whatever. I see us almost like lilies, you know, these big lilies that's on ponds, you know, in the Amazon, they big leaves. They almost look like a lid. I see ourselves in life as these big leaves on a pond. No yeah. one is higher than another one. Uh -huh. But some, some lily pads has got frogs on it. Some has got something else on it, dragonflies. We're all different in our way. But uh, am I in the right spot? I often wonder that. I wonder that especially especially in Toastmasters. Berta, uh, you mentioned uh, that to, to avoid uh, having imposter syndrome, uh, you, I don't know what you said. You said something like you tell yourself something or you have a message yes. to give yourself. What, yes. what do you say yes. to yourself? Hmm. Uh, to, to be honest, I haven't felt it yet. Probably I will, or I will be forced in a situation that I might but uh, to be honest, uh, since I'm out of GE, I'm in an extra positive mood. I'm, I'm listening to these affirmations every morning and it really, really helps. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it tells me I'm worth it. Money comes to me in every way. I know I was saying bullshit to these things some years ago, but <laughs> now I, I, I really understand. I, I'm understanding and, and I ask Magda and I, I believe her in many uh -huh. levels. So it's, it's about really conditioning my brain to look at it in a positive and worthful and solution uh, seeking way, mm -hmm. which I believe so. I mean, I am not an HR, uh, deep HR person. I never did this and that, but I have so many other qualities and so much work put already on the table that I am perfectly capable of doing what I am, I'm uh, attacking to do. That is absolutely clear to me otherwise i would be shaking i mean I'm, I'm doing several several other things i mean i have a style uh style consultant now a friend of mine and uh, they are working on my clothing and how i look <laughs> and today today i i talked to an owner of a, a very niche uh, creative design company and then now I made a deal with them and they will design a logo with my name and surname and they design a logo on employee engagement in Turkish language, Çalışan Bağlılığı. And as well as they will prepare a, a startup starting kit for me with letterheads and uh, uh, PowerPoint templates and, and just a look and feel of a professional uh, a company. Normally, not many people would do such an investment, but but mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Yeah. For example, I was I, I could I I felt a little bit bad after after I said okay to the guy, let's do it. 
and then there is a certain amount of money that I don't spend uh, every day. Uh, but now I feel really okay because this is an investment for at least uh, at least five years to go if I'm in this business and that's not a question I'm in that business so I'm deep deeper in it so I will try I will try many other things I mean uh, I'm I'm worth it I will do it yeah it's 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 my it's my conversation with myself that that affirmations Bob Baker thanks to this guy uh -huh. uh, it it really it really changed my my discussion with myself really. Yeah, all that. And then uh, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention in this chapter uh, on page two forty nine, he mentions mm -hmm. uh, the the normative pressures, uh, and um, and he uh, advocates uh, giving your clients or giving your your buyers or your audience members a uh, totem of some sort, something that they could post on their office wall or something. Uh, mm. and, and I read that and I was thinking, huh, I wonder, like, what could I do? Uh, and, and, you know, I know that, uh, like, for, for our, uh, the presentation training sessions that, that Alper and I have done, uh, mm. Albert uh, likes to, to pass out the uh, certificates, you know, that uh, such and such person has passed, uh, you know, a presentation training program or something like that. And at first, mm -hmm. at first I, I looked at those and I thought, ah, oh, you know, who needs that? But people love that stuff. <laughs> so I, I was wondering, uh, like, In that vein of what could I do to give somebody a, a totem? I was like, when somebody, a coworker walks past, when some, when, when a client, for example, uh, you know, takes one of my courses or mm. been a client of mine for a while, uh, when a when an employee walks past their office. I want them to have some sort of conversation piece on the wall, something like that certificate. Um, that, something like that certificate that Alper used to pass pass out. It helps. Um, it helps. Yeah, I, I don't know what what uh, uh, like. <laughs> do you imagine yourself using anything like that, Bertai? Um, surely yes, with my mm -hmm. new uh, mini corporate uh, branding. Uh -huh. uh, yes, I, I can ask this guy to create a certificate for me. I mean, yeah, I, I have some flexibility to ask the guy some extras as well. So this might be one of them. Thank you for reminding me that. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah. I, 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 can I, I make a comment about the certificates? Yeah, please do. <laughs> I've got no value at all. <laughs> well, what, why, why, why do you say that, Magda? Well, take Toastmasters, for instance, getting this little certificate from Toastmasters International. Oh, you know, you've done this, you've done that. Who cares? Oh. But people love that stuff. I know, most people love it, and therefore I'm often feeling like a foreigner on this earth. <laughs> um, I don't like it. I don't frame it. I don't have it up anywhere. Make the, is it because you you got it too much, too many? Because you finish so many levels. How about yes, like it's, if it's, you got it's, a It's a commodity for you, Magda. I I don't have DTM. I don't have level four. I'm I'm a student I'm of everything. I only have a poor CC. <laughs> you will never hear me go into any meeting saying I'm a DT. When they go, I have room, I have all this. I have all this best speaker, yeah. best table topics. But are you keep those things? Of course. You see, it's it's quite thick. Wow. So it is my it is my CC. You see. Uh -huh. I I love it. I love it. I'm I'm in most of these guys, uh, Magda. You see. The best certificate. These are the Turkish Toastmasters, all Turkish. I'm, I'm kind of uh, uh, from, from the Magda uh, end of the spectrum. When somebody gives me oh. one of those, 
it's it's in the trash before before I get home. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Bad. I think if you want to do certificates, don't do a blanket certificate. Uh, Have the option for people who would like it, but then you make it really worthwhile. You don't just give it on a piece of shitty paper. <laughs> you know? What is your suggestion? Frame it, hard paper. Good I paper. show you one. I show you one. Oh yeah, you've got it from Three Kings. Okay, so you are saying spend more money and make it worthwhile. Eh? Make it worthwhile, you. yes. That people really feel this is something. Um, I never go into any of the Toastmasters meetings and tell people I'm a DTM. <laughs> in a room oh, full of DTM. Nice, well, nice. Employee of, of the month. <laughs> Congratulations. This team when is... everyone is a DTM, how important is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not a DTM. Uh, <laughs> this is the frame one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Employee of the month. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go to like $120. <laughs> wow. In cash. Wow. That's some money. Congratulations, Vic. Okay, guys, I, I really had a long day. We can stop if you like on page 250. Okay. And then um, yeah, I want to say those last 10 pages, he just goes over 15 signals that you should raise your fees. Charge right, uh, money, blah, blah, blah. I'm Alan Weiss. Okay. I drive a nice car. <laughs> okay, then we can move to chapter 10 then. Yeah. Okay, chapter 10 is going to be give us a lot to talk about. Um, who's got the recording now, Matt? You? Yeah, I've got the recording. I'll post it tomorrow. You've got to cut okay. out that bit that I'm saying. <laughs> it's an arrogant no, boss that you've got no, to cut, no cutting, cut that out. No cutting. No cutting. It's just uh, for a very small number of people, so no worries. Okay, yeah. so no one else has got access to it. Don't worry. Don't no, want nobody's going to gonna watch it. You know? <laughs> nobody will go. I don't want to be sued, you know, the guy... <laughs> getting onto our site and decide okay he's going to make money out of me so <laughs> no i mean uh, the, the one of the final uh, meetings of this group uh, we should i'm serious we should invite uh, invite alan weiss <laughs> i mean okay, i will i will i will write to him to be honest I please will do it that would I be will. great Maybe I will change my opinion. <laughs> yeah, if, if he comes, I mean, I will, I will make it because that is something. That is something, a group of people really going deep and enjoying the conversation and inspired by his book. So I will, I will find him and write an email to him. Okay. That's, if he can do it without asking a fee, I would be really impressed. But I've got a course, fee. There will be a fee course. attached to it. <laughs> no, 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 no. He shouldn't. He shouldn't. No fee. <laughs> Thousand, just, uh, just uh, he should join join the conversation. Just, just uh, like any humble person would do. <laughs> okay, before we go, but are you going to do chapter ten? Who's going to do chapter ten? Uh, not me, uh, Victor. Okay. Please, young people should do it. Which one? Or Magda, young people number two. Oh yes, I'm so young. I'll sure. take that up any time. Good. I take uh, maybe it's good that I don't take it because many of my opinions are oh, not different. the same as Toastmasters. Uh -huh. Yeah, but uh, Ellen Weiss, uh, stage, people, yeah, stage you know, skills. because innocent and Rose is innocent. I don't want to spoil the Toastmasters' life forever. <laughs> no, no, Toastmasters is something different. But I mean. Uh, his, his way of putting the stage skills is interesting to discuss for all of us yeah. because we are from... We well, are from, the fact of the matter is I actually school. agree with him. Okay, in many ways. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, who's taking chapter 10? Shall okay. I take it? Yes, okay, Magda. Are you okay, Vic? Do you want to take chapter 10? No, I, I want to take chapter 11. <laughs> okay, all then good. it's done. At least you have something, okay? Yeah, okay, so we sit. Yes. Okay, guys, if you want to read anything about uh, people having all kinds of comebacks and not solving a problem, please read on, uh, well, it's an easy 
it's an easy way to get into the topic all the arguments ad hominem the meaning of that is against the person as when you don't address the argument but you go for the person mm. and you will find that if you look at all this stuff uh, this is exactly trump you know yeah. some call him president trump <laughs> some yeah <laughs> yeah so um if you if you read this um and you do business it is very easy to say thank you for your opinion this is where it's falling in this is an uh, this is a discussion about me as a person that's not a solution to the problem so that's a really nice way not to getting your feelings injured because you know exactly what's going on they might not even know that they're doing it so there okay. you go two books before we leave this one i am about to finish uh, yeah it's a nice very nice uh, she's talking about seven points to practice leadership and uh, very practical i like i like and i wrote an email to her and she answered it really long and beautifully so i really appreciate her oh thank you we can have it on uh, on yes. uh, uh, wordpress for uh, uh, a blaze because victor and i am going to work on discussing books all about leadership teamwork that type of thing on the okay. wordpress website okay i can i can send a link or something and yes. this is the second one i didn't i didn't read it yet but i i listened to a podcast about this from the yeah. writer and i enjoyed it as well so yeah. she was a she was a leader of a small startup and she made so many mistakes and she she wrote a book about it how she you know get over some of the problems and it's also very practical i like practical books as i i need again a, a database of stories that is what we discussed for some time yeah so i still didn't start that i will i will start that but uh, before that i have to do my uh, excel crm okay what i'm going to request is an add to the chapter that i'm going to discuss because it's going 